Hey guys, welcome to Open Source Options. Um, today we're going to talk about using NumPy where, which is a super powerful function for vectorizing conditional operations, if else statements across arrays in NumPy. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll kind of walk through what it is and how it works with some examples. Um, I'm going to use Jupyter Notebooks today because it just makes it easier to see the output and generate things as I go along to make this more of a better story. Um, the code will be posted on my website, opensourceoptions.com, and I will include a link to that code in the description below. So let's start out by importing NumPy, NumPy if you prefer, as NP. I'll hit Shift Enter to run that and go to the next cell. Now what we want to do is we want to set up a basic one-dimensional array here. So I'm going to do A1D equals np.square np.a range 10. So what this is going to do, this is going to create an array. And I'm just going to print it out and show you what it looks like, and I'll explain it. So let's go ahead and hit Shift Enter. So we have this array, and this array is the square of NPA range, which gives me the values 0 through 9 in sequence. And so here I have the squares of those numbers. And the reason I've squared these is so that the values are not the same as the array indices. The array indices are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I don't want those values to all be identical. All right, so there's the array we created. Now, let's say here that I want to find um, where this array is greater than 5. So the way I can do that is I can do np.where a1d is greater than 5. And when I run this, it's going to give me an array, and in this array are the indices where those values occur. So you can see that the third index, fourth, all the way up to ninth, which third index starts here at nine, is greater than five. And so that's how we can get those values. All right. Now, we can also use this to index. And so let's say I want to get the actual values and not just the indices. Say, okay, well, I want to know what those values are that are greater than five. And we can do that by doing A1D, we'll index it using the square brackets, and then we just do np.where a1d is greater than 5. And now this is going to print out an array with those values. In it. So let's go ahead and run that. And you can see here that it's pulled out those values 9 through 81, where the array is indeed greater than 5. All right. Well, let's say instead of just putting those values out, I want to create a new array, and in that new array, I just want to change the values. And we can do that like this. We can do np.where a1d is greater than 5. And now I'm going to give it a value of true and a value of false. Okay, so this is going to say, well, where this is true, give it a value of 1. And where it's false, give it a value of 0. And so let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to hit Shift Enter and see what this looks like. So we have zero values for everywhere this initial array is less than 5. And we have ones everywhere it is greater than five. Pretty simple. Now we can save this to a new variable. So we'll call this uh, A1D, we'll call it bin for binary. Um, and then I'm just going to copy this down from this cell up here. And um, that'll be saved as some variable now. And I can print that out A1D bin. And there you go. So same thing. We'll just save that to a variable. All right, and then this binary array can obviously be used for a lot of different purposes for masks and for things like that. All right, now I want to show you one more thing here, and that is instead of using uh, these scalar values, we can use a variable to replace the values. So let's do np.where a1d greater than 5, and let's see where that is true. I want the value to stay the same. I want it to be a1d, but where it's false, I want it to be 0. So if I do this, now you can see that where A1D is less than or equal to 5, we get zeros. Where it is greater than 5, we get the original value of A1D. And we could input any array here that was the same shape as the one we are comparing to. All right. So that's the basics of 1D arrays. Let's, uh, let's move on to a little more complicated example um, with 2D arrays. And you can do this stuff with any arrays of any dimensionality, we're going to do 1D and 2D just to 
is somewhat simple, and if you have more complex needs, you can work those out. But let's start with A2D, and I'll make an, an array that's about the same, you know, kind of the same concept as before. We're going to do the square of NTA range, and we're going to do 15 this time. So we're going to reshape that into five rows and three columns, and then we'll print out uh, A2D down here so you can see what it looks like. So let's hit Shift Enter, and here we go. We've got A2D printed out where we have 0, 1, all the way up to 196, which is 14 squared. All right. So let's uh, just do the same thing here. So let's do np.where, and we'll do where A2D is greater than 65. Now we're going to get a little different result here because we have a two-dimensional array. We are going to get two arrays of indices, one array of indices for rows and one array of indices for columns. Let's hit shift enter and see this. Okay, so our first array here gives us the column indices, which are columns three and four, so zero, one, two, column three, and column four. You can see we have three instances of column three, three of column four. Then we have our columns, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, and zero, one, two. So basically this is telling us that these six values right here are greater than 65, which indeed is true. All right, now let's just show how we can index this. Um, it's important to keep in mind the dimensionality of the outputs when you index things. And so uh, let's do, let's just copy the statement down and we'll index it like the 1D array. Um, now note this is a 2D array. This index call is going to return a 1D result because we're getting one value for each of these pairs. So we're taking the result of this, putting it into this index, and we're going to get one value for each index pair. So let's show you what that looks like. If we hit Shift Enter, you can see we now have this in a 1D array, and there you have it. We could also do something like we've done before. We do A2, or sorry, NP, copy NP.where, a2d greater than 65, um, a2d, or, and zero, or we could even do negative one, where it's not true. And if we hit control enter there, then you can see that we get negative ones where that value is not true, and we get these values where it is true. And that keeps the shape of our array the same, um, but just changes those values that we're potentially not interested in. All right. So there you go. Those are the basics of NumPy where and how you can apply simple if-else statements and conditional statements across arrays. Now, the reason you want to use this is because these vectorized functions um, are way faster than doing a loop. You can do this with a loop and apply an if-else statement to every index in that grid or in that array, but that would be super slow. Using the where function is very computationally efficient, and it's going to speed up your code. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this useful. And remember, I've got another video coming next week, and that video will be about accessing NetCDF files and plotting them with X-Array.